The Pico 4 is exploding in popularity, even so much that the company hasn't been able to ship all their pre-orders. But how good is it really? And should you buy this new VR headset? Well, make sure you destroy that like button on your way in and let's dive right into it. The Pico 4 has been praised due to its insane upgraded specs on paper, but how well do these translate in actual real usage? Starting off with the comfort and IPD adjustment, because the first thing that you will directly notice when using the Pico 4 is its slimmer and lighter visor. Although the headset overall is heavier than the Quest 2, they made the decision to put the battery pack in the back of the headset, much like we see in the Elite Strap accessory. This balances the weight significantly better, making it feel less like you have a brick strapped to your face. Nice. And in combination with that lighter visor, thanks to their new pancake lenses, it has a dramatic difference in comfort. This is also true for their facial interface material, which has a kind of breathable fabric similar to that we had in the Oculus Go, and a big upgrade to the foam interface from the Quest. There is, however, one major issue, but it only affects a small amount of people. The Pico 4 on paper is said to have a wider range for IPD adjustment, but once you get to the smallest section of 58 millimeters, the lenses might start to press directly against your nose. This is also why on the spec sheet itself, it claims support for 62 millimeters till 72. But if you have an IPD below this, you might wanna reconsider your option. Which gets us to the feel and view and visuals. This is probably one of my favorite aspects of the Pico 4 because it has a bigger horizontal as well as a bigger vertical view of view. And this is instantly noticeable. But just like the new Quest Pro, they are also rocking pancake lenses, which can create a sharper image both in the center as well as the peripheral vision. And for those who are concerned with lens glare, it is still there in the Pico 4, but the effect is reduced compared to their previous ones. The two displays inside the VR headset also have a higher resolution, giving a bigger overall clarity and a noticeable step up from the Quest 2, but with the only downside being that the display is slightly washed out, with less contrast or popping colors. But an important thing we have to talk about is the performance and tracking, because the problem with the Pico's 4 higher resolution and larger field of view is that it is still powered by the same old Snapdragon XR2 chip, which is the exact same chip that is used in the Quest 2. The result of asking the same chip to render more pixels and more geometry will of course create some performance issues. Perhaps this is also the reasons that Pico's force refresh rate is set to a 72 Hz by default, with a 90 Hz setting in experimental options, where the Quest 2 tries to hit that base refresh rate at 90 Hz. Another improvement point for the Pico 4 is that the positional tracking just isn't as solid yet as the Quest 2. Even in a room with good lighting and plenty of high contrast features, you might still experience some tiny jitter on both the headset and the controllers. But do keep in mind that this headset just got released. And while Meta has been working on this since 2014, it is almost certain that post-launch software updates will completely get rid of this problem. On the other hand, we also have the basics like the user interface, where the system software inside VR is very similar to that of the Quest. So if you've tried a Quest and like the interface, you will probably like the one from the Pico 4 as well. Bringing up the menu while being inside an app is very fast and smooth, sometimes even snappier than that of the Quest. The only downside that it feels a bit less polished, with little touches like haptic feedback on virtual keyboards that are still missing out. But these features as well can be expected in the system software updates. Let's talk about the color pass-through. One of the biggest upgrades to the Pico 4 is the full color high resolution camera that is built in on the outside of the headset, which is a massive upgrade compared to the low resolution black and white view on the Quest 2. Of course, by using only one color camera, it does mean that right now the pass-through isn't depth corrected, meaning yet somewhat of a monoscopic display. So it isn't primed yet for those mixed reality experiences but still an overall big step up. But another huge change they made is in the VR controllers, with an all new design that creates an arc that goes over your hand. The advantage of this is so that you can bring your hands much closer together without bashing your controllers into each other. This actually makes some interactions like rapidly reloading your weapon far less frustrating. For content creators, there's also something special because it has a dedicated screenshot button 
that you can hold down to start recording. And the battery life of the Pico 4 controllers seems roughly the same as that of the Quest 2. And compared to their previous generation that was included in the Pico 3 headset, these new controllers feel a lot more premium. But one of the most controversial and talked about topics is the content and VR games. With the Pico 4 app now slowly but surely filling up with many of the Quest's top titles. You will now find games like The Walking Dead and Superhot, but also Blade and Sorcery and Demio, and so many more. But of course, Meta has built up a catalog of standalone exclusive games you won't find on a Pico 4. This includes big games like Resident Evil and Population 1. But Pico is also promising to bring its own exclusives, like its new partnership with Just Dance VR for next year. Luckily, if you also own a gaming PC, you can play the games like Beat Saber and Onward, as well as PC VR exclusives like Half-Life Alex or Skyrim to Steam VR. Because just like the Quest, the Pico 4 has a built-in wired and wireless PC VR streaming. And although it doesn't work quite as well as Airlink, there is also the option to install virtual desktop. So you can play all your PC VR exclusives on the Pico 4 as well slimming down the list significantly of the games that are not playable on this headset. But that gets us to the final conclusion. The Pico 4 offers some superior hardware compared to the Quest 2, both in overall comfort as well as a wider field of view and a sharper display. But the content ecosystem is far less developed and the software isn't as refined yet. So if you already own a Quest 2, depending on your hardware needs, it might be worth waiting to upgrade the headset. But for those who don't own a VR headset yet, the Pico 4 is looking very good. But if you wanna see a direct comparison between the Pico 4 and the Quest 2, then check out the video you see on screen right now.